In this video, we're going to look at what happens when ionic compounds dissolve in water. Let's take a little crystal of sodium chloride made up of positive sodium ions, the green circles, and negative chloride ions, the yellow circles. When ionic compounds are dissolved in water, the ions separate. Let's drop our crystal into the water. What happens is the crystals actually break apart. We say they dissociate into separate independent ions. So in a glass of salt water, there are no salt particles floating around. There are actually separate independent positive sodium ions and negative chloride ions, all floating around independent of each other. Think of it as ion soup, a whole mix of ions floating around in the water. We can use our chemical shorthand to write a brief description of what happens there. A simple little equation, our sodium chloride, NaCl, breaks up into separate positive sodium ions and negative chloride ions. Let's look at another example. Sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound. It's made up of the positive sodium metal ions, the green circles, and negative hydroxide ions. You know from earlier work that a hydroxide ion is a polyatomic ion. It's made up of one oxygen atom, the red circle, bonded to one hydrogen atom, the black circle. This little grouping is fairly stable, so it's convenient to think of it as just a single particle with an overall negative charge. Let's drop our crystal of sodium hydroxide in the water. When it does, of course, we know the ions are going to separate. So now, instead of crystals of sodium hydroxide, those crystals have broken apart or dissociated, and we have separate independent positive sodium ions and negative hydroxide ions all floating around in the water. We have our ion soup. Once again, we can use our chemical shorthand to describe what happened there. Our sodium hydroxide, NaOH, has broken up to form positive sodium ions and negative hydroxide ions. So in a solution of sodium hydroxide, there are no sodium hydroxide particles. There are separate positive sodium ions and negative hydroxide ions. One more example. Hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is a gas, and you would think of it as a covalent compound because it's made of two nonmetals, hydrogen and chlorine. But recall from earlier work, we said sometimes hydrogen behaves like a metal. Specifically, if the name of the compound is hydrogen something, that's a compound where we can often assume hydrogen atoms are acting like metals and they will readily give up their electrons to form positive hydrogen ions. And that's what happens when we dissolve these compounds in water. When our hydrogen chloride molecules are dissolved in the water, they dissociate. The chlorine atoms take the electron from the hydrogen and we get separate positive hydrogen ions and negative chloride ions floating around in the water. The black dots are the hydrogen ions, the yellow dots are the chloride ions. Once again, we have an ion soup. Even though technically hydrogen chloride would not be considered an ionic compound, when compounds named hydrogen something dissolve in water, we can assume they act like ionic compounds and separate into positive hydrogen ions and the rest of the compound becomes a negative ion. Once again, we can write a simple equation to describe what happened there. Our hydrogen chloride, HCl, when dissolved in water, breaks up into positive hydrogen ions and negative chloride ions. So by way of summary, the main point here is when ionic compounds are dissolved in water, the ions separate, they break up. There are separate positive and negative ions floating around in the water. And we have to remember that certain hydrogen compounds behave in a similar way. Any compound whose name is hydrogen something, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen sulfate, and so on, when they dissolve in water, they will break up into 
positive hydrogen ions and whatever the negative ion happens to be.